Oh. I would be more. I would be <laughs> Welcome to uh, the November 16th Board of Directors meeting. We will start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we move on to our first item, um, it's my understanding that uh, we um, are going to need a motion to table uh, number five, the second reading of policy JICK, because the, they were not able to meet. Uh, so we have a motion to table that. So moved. I'll second the second. And all in favor of tabling that? Moving on to uh, public input, our vice chair will lead our public input statement. The first public input session is a 21-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement, but a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his her name, address, and the reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This time is for comments as opposed to questions. Thank you. And do we have any public input? No? Okay. Uh, then we will move on to the minutes of November 2nd. I think there's an error because there's an unfinished sentence. Laura, where are you? I wasn't sure. <laughs> I read. I think something I said. Other, too. other? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something I said. It says Ms. Dears has shared the board her appreciation for the administration, all the buildings, oh, yeah, yeah. and all after. <laughs> I think probably after a week. Oh, for such a short amount of time. Yeah. It's exactly what it was. Yeah, sorry about that. Perfect. I will adjust that. <laughs> so that is a question that we will follow yeah. up with because yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. Okay. we did yeah. we did reach out. Well, we just haven't got a final answer. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the November second meeting. As an amendment. As amended. All in favor? Oh, I'm abstaining. Uh, moving on to financial summary. Okay. So you should have had the financial summary through October shared with you. There's a hard copy going around. Just okay. So Anybody wants a copy? Okay. Again, uh, we are collecting our revenue in line. We, you know, uh, most of our revenue, I believe it's 98% maybe, uh, comes from both the towns and the state of Maine, and they're regular payers to us, so uh, we appreciate that. Um, Expense-wise, I'm still, the two areas I'm most concerned with at this point are the, the um, private charter buses for athletics and electricity. So I'm continuing to follow those, but. Uh, they are trending in line with where they have been. So we are, we've used, um, let's see, 56.3% of our um, charter buses of the annual budget at this point. Again, we're hoping that um, as the year goes on, we hire more bus drivers so we're able to transport to those teams directly with our staff. Um, and then electricity, where um, compared to last year, last year at this point we had spent 28.65% of our budget. This year we're at 27.02. So we're roughly in the same 
space percentage wise. But those again, those are the areas I'm focusing on. And then all right. Thank you. Thanks. We don't have any new hires, but we do have two resignations. One just came in, so you haven't received that copy. Um, the first one is Bridget Van Hook from Special Education and at Noble Middle School, and she has received a job um, closer to home. So we do need a motion and a second for that. Um, and the next one is Brenda France, who is our Excel teacher at um, Knowlton School. And Brenda has received a full-time position in a different district, so she's been designing for that. So we need a motion. Oh, it's been 23 years. Oh. Yeah, the motion to approve with appreciation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay. Those are the only um, updates we have for employment. Superintendent? Okay, sure. So our first update, um, we're just following up on the email that Josh had sent requesting two pieces of information. The first one was about um, achievement tests or what we're doing for testing. So we did, um, at the request of Elva, Create information, um, a document. I think there's too many that way. Yeah. Okay. We'll do this. We okay. created a document and we'll, we'll <laughs> talk through this a little bit for you. Thank you. <coughs> oh. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, maybe. I got a little excited. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So we have talked a few times about um, our assessment data. And then there was the follow-up question just about what are we doing and what grade levels are we working with these things and when are we testing and who is receiving the results. So this document is all-encompassing of K-12 of what we are covering. And as you can see, uh, I'll st I won't go through all of them, but I'll just start like with the dial four. That is for incoming kindergarten students. So in the state of Maine, all incoming kindergarten students need a screener. So we've used the dial uh, for fourth edition. Um, and then the main purpose is um, you know, to evaluate the developmental skills, motor skills, conceptual and perceptual abilities, language skills, social and emotional development. So our teachers screen for that. And then our teachers at the end of the screening will meet with parents and talk through some of those, um, those areas, those scores. Um, this is also a screener that we've used with families to support families when if they notice like um, like an articulation or something you know in their student before they can come in you know, before they get into kindergarten if they want to pursue that through child development services so it's a really good tool not only for the school but it's also a good tool for parents to bring forward to um, to get some additional support for their student before they start school so um, I'll just go through a couple others. So we do a lot of early literacy assessments, kindergarten to second grade. Uh, so we assess sounds with the alphabet, letter sound fluency, phonemic awareness, phonics, high frequency words, and then on the wind, when column, fall, winter, spring, and as needed. Sometimes we will do that in, a, in you know in between sessions <coughs> for ongoing assessment, and then the results go to teachers and parents. The benchmark assessment, which is for reading, for literacy. Um, it's kindergarten to fifth grade. We identify students' current reading levels, identify reading behaviors, monitor progress and growth, pinpoint areas of strength and areas that require further support, and inform instructional decisions and tailor reading instruction to individual student needs. That again is the fall, winter, spring and that's teachers, educational technicians that may be working with students, as well as parents. Um, that is not the only time we are assessing students in literacy. Ongoing um, throughout the week and throughout weeks during literacy groups and, and formal reading instruction, teachers are taking a running record of formative, ass you know, formative assessment, working with students to continue to make sure that we're, they're at the right level. Can they move up a level? or also making sure that we're teaching them everything that they need at that level. 
So um, that's that. <coughs> I think, Josh, these were the ones, the bubbles, right? The well, NWEA. Oh, well, I was just curious, yeah. so just uh, all that. I didn't know if you wanted to ask questions that you go through, or if you'd rather just kind of do your presentation I'm just and answer. Do, yeah. Okay, sure. great. So great. the NWEA we use for two purposes. So that is the state test, and we had Dr. Shannon Swiger in here, our curriculum coordinator, director of teaching and learning, in here earlier this year to talk about that piece for the state. We also use it for growth to look at our students in kindergarten, second grade, ninth grade, and 11th grade. So it has, you know, we use it for two different purposes. We're, um, the three to eight and 10th grade take this as part of the state testing. Um, and the other grades we're taking again to inform instruction, to show growth, to, uh, you know, to look at the norms and inform instruction as well. And so we would call the information from the NWEA to assist with literacy again and math and numeracy and, and everything. So that is, those are our two um, uses <coughs> for NWEA. I guess I'll go through a couple more. Um, keep going. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep going. Okay, so on the, the second page, the first page, back of the first page, um, English Language Arts Common Course Standards. We have, several years ago, we developed some very, very strong units that address the Common Core and assessments that go with the Common Core state standards. And so we also, um, at the end of units, we also work through assessing those in kindergarten and fifth grade. Again, that's the fall, the winter, spring, and that's primarily for teachers to um, inform instruction. The next one is Eureka Math, that's K-5, that is um, at the end of the unit assessments. That also goes to teachers and parents, and that's ongoing whenever a unit is complete. And um, again, that also helps guide instruction. We also have little assessments during that time, like exit tickets and other little mini kind of uh, assessments that help gauge where students are, where we would want more um, to do more teaching. And then for six to 12, we have content areas. So end of the unit assessments. So this assesses proficiency with major concepts, skills, and graduation standards and 21st century learning expectations. Um, and that's ongoing and it's for teachers, students receive that information as well and parents, and we put in parentheses here IC because that is Infinite Campus, and a lot of our elementary parents don't use Infinite Campus because we don't set up elementary <coughs> parents to access it, but at the upper levels you can access your students, you know, um, a lot of things, like their schedule, what they're getting for grades, um, and that's why we put Infinite Campus in there, because that's the thing our students start having information in Infinite Campus. And then, um, advanced placement courses and scores, and that's 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, the, school, the courses are scored um, one to five based on the exam in the spring, and the courses can be used for college credits based on a score of three, four, or five, depending on the post-secondary institution where the student is um, looking to go. And that's the family and student receives that information. And then the PSAT, SATs, that's in grades 10 and 11. Students choose to take the tests that, that are used to obtain scholarships or admittance to some colleges and universities. Multiple administrators administer that. That's for the family and student. Uh, several years ago in the state of Maine, SAT was required for students to take, and it is not currently a requirement for all students, but we do have it in here because we do really um, work with families and students to make sure that we're, we're offering that for them and providing information on where those hubs are going to be. Um, we have the COGATS, which is a test in third and fifth grade, and that really helps us when we're looking at our Excel classes and um, students that um, may have some, some real strengths in areas. So it looks and measures general and abstract reason, reasoning skills that are tied to learning and problem solving. So verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, nonverbal reasoning. That's in the winter and the teachers get that information. And again, that, that helps us when we're looking at students um, to teach them, but also you know, as part of the packet that we look at when we're looking at students for Excel. We have the main science assessment, and that's grade five, eight, and 11. And again, this is through the state of Maine. This is not um, a district sponsored activity. 
Um, so it's the state assessment, and it assesses the understanding of Maine science and engineering standards, which are the next generation of science standards. We give that in the spring, and um, the teachers receive that information. We send it to parents once we receive that information. And then we did add form and assessment in here, um, which are mostly, you know, either homegrown kind of assessments or assessments that teachers collaborate and work on and develop together. Um, so classes, uh, you know, classroom tests, exit tickets, written assessments, problem sets, um, anything that will help to inform instruction. And then we also added on here, because we can't escape this, and this is the National Assessment of Educational Progress. This is the national test. And we often get tapped to do that at fourth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade, usually in the winter time. And we do not receive a breakdown of our student performance. It's the national test, so it kind of shows up in a national warming process, a national reporting process. So those are um, an exhaustive list, I think, of what we do. And it looks like a lot, and it is a lot. There are some grade levels that get um, that have more of a focus than other grade levels. Like sometimes we feel from fifth grade because they have the you know, they have the COGATs, they've got the science, they've got, so we really try to balance things as best that, as we can, and we're really cognizant of when we're asking students to participate in some of these tests. So, you know, like with the COGATs, we don't, it's not like a state test where you have a, a short window, so sometimes we flux that a little bit, depending on, you know, how the students are doing with testing. If they've just come off of, you know, come off of a big test, we're not gonna test them for the, co the COGATs right after that. So. So that's that. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you have um, any pre-work that you do with students for PSAT or SAT? We do have some, but it's not teaching to the test. Like we'll work just on some of those strategies or some of those, you know, how when you get into the SAT, some of those reasoning things, mm -hmm. this or, you know, those things. We may incorporate some of that in class, but we don't teach. teach it. Right, okay. Thank you. First of all, for putting this together, I know it's a lot of work, sure. and uh, to, to just kind of put it all together mm -hmm. in a matrix, I, I sincerely appreciate it. Um, just a couple questions as you, as you were talking. Um, the the dial, it's a screen before kindergarten. Is that something that, like, is that, when you say before kindergarten, is that done over the summer? Is it done the first week of kindergarten? The kids that enroll within a day or two, do they actually go to the dial, or is that something because they're not in class and they don't do the dial? Could you just? Sure. So we um, have kindergarten registration usually in May, mm -hmm. April to May, okay. and parents sign up to have, bring up the screen for the dial screening at that time. Um, so it's normed by age. So it, yeah. so the students that register the day before school, they will take it as well. Do do um, mm -hmm. Yes, we, we make sure that we try to get everything you know, oh, up. Everybody to have the test. Yes. Yeah, it is great information. Not every school does that. Right. So it's a credit right. to our district yes. that, that we yes. do that kind of screening and, and talk to the parents. Yeah. So thank you for that. Sure. Um, the early literacy assessments. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all different, like the alphabet, the LSF chart, the Haggerty words their way in the fry. Those are those are five completely different assessments. Is that correct? Correct. And mm -hmm. do all students are all students assessed in those, or does it come up by need or concern? All students are assessed if they can be assessed. Yes. Understood. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then. If they are at their point, they're not reassessed later on because they they they. I mean, they are, it says as needed. So are they are they are all students reassessed in the winter and are all students reassessed in the spring or do some like if they, out, so yes, to speak. Yes, if they if they if they know all of this, right. they don't need. We don't need to keep testing them. Correct. Great. Great. Yeah. The benchmark assessment mm -hmm. is Fontes and Pinnell, correct? One of them. Yes, one of them can be Fontes and Pinnell. Sometimes we use reading A to Z. Okay. As well. The reading A to Z is computerized, correct? The reading A to Z you can pull it. I think you, you print it off the computer. It's not. You don't sit them in front of the computer. You print it off. And, and it's a it's a benchmark assessment. Yes. Right? It's it's a, a, just yes. Out, right? yes. All right. Um, and then the NWA is, is mandated for grades three through eight and ten, right? Yes. It's a state mandated test. Yes. Uh, and that and that is a growth test. Yes. The state is using as a. There, so one third of it, I, I think it's one third. One third of it is grade level material. The other parts of it are the growth pieces. So they can it fluctuates up and down depending on how they answer the question. So for third grade, for example, they have a certain number of them for a straight 
third grade questions, whether or not you answered higher or lower, you mm -hmm. know, so, but the rest of the test is, is measured based on, you get it right, you know, you get it right, then you go up to a higher level of testing. So that's a, I'm assuming it is in the spring, the state assessment one, that's the one that counts in the spring, though, right? Like they don't, do they, are there third grade level questions in the fall, winter, and spring assessment of the math? I, I'm gonna. When, when they take the through year yeah. in the spring, yeah. that that's is the one. third grade, yes. So like the third grade will have third grade material at that time. In the, when we do it like in this fall, they will also have third grade, but that, it won't be a third of the questions because we don't take the state part of that test till the spring. So the test in the springtime is longer? Is right. The, I mean, I'm assuming it's, because the typical math is around 50 questions for the kids, right. depending on what you right. do. So they get yes. those 80 questions in the spring? No, so I'm looking at Tina because she, she just the same, administered the same the same right. questions. Yes. yes. So they adjust, the three year is adjusted, the NWA is adjusted for the three year. So it's a, t it's a, it's kind of like a separate version of the NWA yeah. with those. So they take one third of the, mm -hmm. of the I'll say state level questions. Yeah, so yeah. 20 of them are going to be based on specifically third grade. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones go up and down based on how the kids answer. Wow. And it's, it's complicated in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is. And, uh, it, it is. It is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come back to that. I just wanted to like, kind of get some clarification stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the ELA CCSS, mm -hmm. um, that's district created assessments, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's, um, the Read for Math is the book series, yes. right? Our math reading mm -hmm. series. Um, so those are benchmark assessments, mm -hmm. right? Um, the content area NDVs are benchmark assessments, right? Because it's just end, end mm -hmm. of edu finish content, edu finish, and you right. yes. in the test, right? Yes. Um, AP courses, that I mean, that's just an AP course. I mean, you either, that's, I mean, that's benchmark that's assessment. Right. You get five or four, three or two, right. that's all yeah. there's to it, right? Um, the PSAT and SAT, my question there was, do we know what our participation rate is? Like, what percent of our 10th graders have taken a PSAT and what percent of our 11th graders have taken the SAT? We can get that in the answer. I can't tell you right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Because um, I know that, that that's, like, if we look at schools, comparison online, mm -hmm. like, they report mm -hmm. that, how many people take it? Yeah. Well, what the average score is. So if you're interested in, you know, what's that percentage of students taking it, you know, additional yeah, scores. Um, the COGAT, COGAT, is, is that a, do all students take the COGAT? All students in third grade and fifth grade. So, so all do, okay, so well, it's I'm a gonna, I'm gonna preface that. that, that if that, they, if that, they are a student who has an IEP that has a uh, cognitive test in their IEP, they do not take the <coughs> test. I think I understand that. Okay. All right. Basically, that's it's appropriate. It's not appropriate. Well, right, but if students who have an IEP have been tested for their yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Or is that considered an achievement test? Because I, the, I don't know how you get the results back. Do you get the results back as this many kids are on grade level, or is it is it this many students pass the test? We get it back on like if they meet exceed um, the, test. the test. So it's a benchmark. Yes. Yes. Essentially, yes. it's a benchmark, yes. right? Um, formative assessments and formative assessments, mm -hmm. and those those are all good things right. um, in this grade. Um, and then the date of which mm -hmm. sometimes we're invited, and sometimes, sometimes we're not, sometimes right? We're invited, and yes. and yes. Maybe you know, we all get in there and. Uh, and you know, so we're kind of all put in. Um, I did have one other question about the, uh, the NWEA math course. You mentioned the um, the IC that the um, content mm -hmm. is for mm -hmm. the campus. Mm -hmm. Do we do we put the NWEA um, scores on the campus as well for the six through twelve grade? We do put assessment scores in. So even benchmark assessments sometimes go in, especially at the lower levels. So yes, we. I can't say 100% of the time, all the time, because we don't have one person designated to do that. But we try to get it all in. Yeah. Um, my, my biggest concern the question, right, and why I had to do this, thank you, that really helps us. We can see, I mean, as a board member, it allows me to talk to the community, like, like we have a lot of benchmark information. I'm actually really happy that we have a lot of benchmark information for our kindergarten to fifth grade, because, like, they change so quickly at that age level. You, like, you're constantly adjusting your instruction, so it's really important that we have these and that our staff is trained so well and so used to doing them, right? Um, so I, I think that is is wonderful, and um, I'm not against any any of the testing that, that we're doing. It seems like it's just a, it's a well laid out. My concern is that we don't in this list we don't actually have an achievement test. We 
we actually don't know what percent of any grade level is achieving at that grade level. Um, the NWA is not that kind of test. It is a diagnostic growth test. And they're, I, they are trying to massage it to kind of at that. But the problem is the NWA compares a, a group of kids, just take a fourth grade group, and compare the top fourth grades across the nation as their, as their norm. It's not criterion reference. It's not reference to fourth grade material. It's reference to fourth graders across the nation. And if we just take a, if we are understanding of the probably the most significant event that's happened to education in the last five years was COVID. And we know, it's been well publicized nationally, that, um, that students at schools across lost about a year and a half of instruction, to, up to two years of instruction in that time. And what we're doing is we're comparing everyone's fourth grade mm -hmm. students to all students who lost about 18 months to two years of instruction. And so we're saying, oh, we're, we're normal with, with everybody else. So we we don't actually know what the impact is, right? And I would ask as a state, we don't know the impact. So I can't control the state, um, but I, I, I am trying to advocate for Noble here and just saying, I, I do think it's important for us as a district to consider looking for achievement tests so we can actually answer that question. And so we have these growth tests and we have these benchmarks, but what are we actually pointing to? You know, in, in, in having that for our district and, and our staff and our community to look at and say, hey, we know that our district is doing a great job, right? Um, that's me personally, that's what I would like to see. So what what is the bar though that you're, you're looking at if we're not comparing to other districts across the country or even in the state, what, what are you looking for? So an achievement test is, is specifically designed, it's a standardized test, mm -hmm. right? That's designed to just measure that grade level's material. So a fourth grader, I'll give an example of a fourth grader, takes a fourth grade level achievement test, mm -hmm. right? And they get the score in that achievement test, and that's the, what, what score they have to get doesn't change ever. During the year, NWA constantly changes the scores that kids make for proficiency or not proficiency. Achievement tests don't, that's the score. You, you make it or you don't, right? And if you make it far above, they, you know, they'll give you that information, but there's a cutoff. And so it's an achievement, it's like saying, okay, so if, if I'm a teacher in you know, fourth grade and the kids take the test, right? and 60% of my kids are at grade level. That's okay, that's good to know. I know exactly which kids are at grade level, right? How, if they're above, if they're below. But now I know achievement. Now I'm looking at their growth work and saying, okay, these kids who are below grade level, right? They're not there. They really need to grow at an accelerated rate. We need to, we need to look at those kids and target those kids. And, figure. and I know we're doing that. I, I, I don't question that we're doing that. I know that we're doing that. But we just don't have an idea. Is it 60% of our kids are on grade level? Is it 40% of our grade level? Our kids are on grade level? Is it 80%? We just don't know. But we do so we have some of that stuff with the NWA, right? But that is not an achievement test. It's not an achievement but test. But it compares students, all third grade students, in, who take it in the, in the country, you get a percentage of where you are, right? But not based on third grade criteria. It's so third grade is compared to third grade. It's a norm. You have to understand, it's a different I, I between a criterion reference test, which is an achievement test, yeah. and a norm reference test, which is the NWA. They, they are different tests. They so cannot I, do the same thing. Do you have an example of a, like, so I understand, mm -hmm. I was a special ed mm -hmm. person, so like, yeah. you're, we're talking like Kaufman test of educational achievement or something. It's, yeah. that's Dying with skills, yeah, yeah, basic yeah. skills tests is so like a California are achievement you, test. Are you, are you asking for us to like implement another type of achievement test I'm like saying across the board? We do not have an achievement but, test. What you're saying absolutely is accurate in terms of like the NWAs and things like that because the the, um, the choices that have been made right. at the state level in terms yep. of what that is. Right. Um, so are you, are, but I guess that's my question. Is like yeah. my suggestion is I, I think we should have an achievement. Like, if you're not a parent, you want to know how they're doing. So yeah. you want to see that. Um, 
But I mean, in theory, we have like mm -hmm. that is. A I, I think that's a lot of testing. Yeah. And you yeah. want to add another one? I don't. I don't disagree. What I'm saying is we have a huge gap. Mm -hmm. we, there's there's a blind spot in our district. In in self admitted environment, it is a blind spot. We don't know. We didn't we say, well, we did not say. Okay, we, not we, we know, it. we know we don't have an achievement test. We can agree that. We we know where our students are falling at the ground. We do not have, not have not going to this, I want to be clear, this, this information, there is not an achievement test in this matrix. Is that true or false? That's what I'm asking. There's not a formal achievement test based on like, yeah, there are assessments. But you know where the kids are at right. for what they should know for that grade. There are four different kinds of assessments, and they all have different purposes, right? So, like, uh, there, yes, there's a ton of assessments on here, but they all serve different purposes. A benchmark assessment, it just, it's, it's a benchmark. It's, they did it, okay, it's a summative kind of assessment, right? And we have lots of benchmarks. We have screeners, which are diagnostic, right? They're dial, your, NW, your NWA is diagnostic. It tells what the kid knows and what the kid doesn't know, and so you can adjust your instruction accordingly, right? So you have diagnostic, you have benchmark, um, you have growth test, which the NWA is also a growth test because not only does it diagnose, it can say this is the difference from year to year, right? So it has the growth. The achievement tests are totally different. You can't use the you can't use benchmark data to say you've met a, an achievement standard, right? So like an Iowa basic skills test, if you, if you just, that's an example of an achievement test, right? Or a California achievement test, right? It's not like they take a textbook of third grade and make that into a test. The questions are like formulated by professional teams that a third grader should be able to answer. Or if it was designed for a fourth grader, it'd be that fourth grader should be able to answer based on their education. It's a completely different kind of test. And I'm just saying we don't have it. And so we're, we don't really know. That's why we don't really know how we stand as a district. Right? That, that's my argument, and, and it's my concern, and I'm concerned about COVID. Uh, I know, we know as a fact there was a huge drop down, and we're using the NWEA, which is completely inappropriate to do it. You're norming, you're norming to, all, all, all third graders lost 18 months, so they're fine. They're not fine. It's not fine. Except for that this district did an incredible job. I'm not saying that. Please do that. I'm not saying that. I mean, the third graders, like, I'm blown away by what those third graders are doing. Like, So I think the administration's done a great job of putting together this information. And I know that for me, when I get information, it kind of begets more questions. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that we sort of streamline the process we think about some things that we maybe want here, and you can funnel that through me, and we can uh, sure. work with it. Mm -hmm. Some you. answers to more questions that we might have. Thank you. I do appreciate That's, the time that you put towards this and the time for discussion. Sure. Thank you. Because I, I guess I go back to what I was trying to ask at the beginning. Uh, what do you recommend we measure against? Yes. And, and I think that would be, you know, yep. and for, and, you know, I'm sure that. This is crazy. Because do we follow, do we follow uh, national curriculum right now? Would we use the Common Core? Okay, yes. So yeah. that's what it would be. I'm assuming that's the question. Right. 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 That's the measures. Yeah. 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 Okay. Moving on to Moving on. other. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yes. So the other um, question that Josh had asked was about. Um, classroom breaks. And before I pass this out, I want a captive audience. <laughs> so the question came in as relocating students because there's some question out in the community about, or some concerns in the community about hearing my child's class had to relocate because of a certain behavior going on in the class. So I just kind of want to go through that a little bit before we talk about specific numbers. So I'll, it's a complex. It's complex. It doesn't sound like it is, but it is complex. So I'm going to start back to the the state legislative um, rules around seclusion and restraint. And what that is, and what that says, is that if you are in a school and you have a student who is having trouble for whatever reason that trouble is, it is very specific that you cannot touch the child. You cannot 
physically move a child. You cannot, you can deflect if somebody's going to hit you. You can deflect so that you are not injured. Um, the only time, the only time that you can put your hands on a student is if they are in imminent danger of harming themselves or harming another person. So with that, sometimes in the classrooms, and you will see sometimes at the lower level, this is a little more predominant as students are learning, you will see that they are having trouble adjusting to you know, learning the routines and maybe for some reason have you know, a time when they are a little more frustrated or their behavior gets a little more escalated. We have very little options when that happens if a student does not willingly want to leave the classroom to go with an adult for a break. So one of the things that they do is um, if a teacher has um, met, you know, gone through the whole repertoire of strategies that he or she knows um, and is comfortable doing and um, then can ask for some support. So any teacher in any of our elementary buildings can pick up a phone and ask for some support. And what that does is either it's a, a principal or an assistant principal, um, the behavior interventionist at the school, um, sometimes the school counselor um, will come down and help. So or a special education teacher, depending on you know if, if the child is known or you know to the special education department or or anything like that. So the teacher, the extra adult, and I mean extra meaning just an extra pair of hand, extra expertise, can come in, and that way that allows the class to leave the room for two purposes. So um, they leave the room, so that gives us an option for that student that's having trouble, time and respect for privacy to calm down with another adult so the child is not left alone. There's another adult in the room and the classroom, the students, do not have to participate in watching what's happening until that child settles down. So it's respect for that student, it's respect for the students that are around that student because it can, you know, it may get no noisy, you know, um, if somebody's crying. You know, you want to protect the dignity of all students. And so when we say break, we are not talking somebody, a classroom relocates for a half hour. Um, we're talking a classroom may go for a walk around the building and come back into their classroom and everything is all set. Meaning that student has successfully left to reset or has already reset and is in the room waiting for their class to come back. So I wanted to frame that just so that we're all under the same idea about what that means when we say a class is relocating. Now, I'm not going to say all the time it's under three minutes or under five minutes. It's an individual situation. But I would say to you that most of our administrators would tell you that it is not a half hour. It's not 20 minutes. It's not 25. There are cases sometimes when that may happen, but that's not the norm. The norm is a, a quick reset, walking through the building, maybe walking through the library and walking back or doing any of the motor activities that you just saw downstairs. So those, like I said, I wanted to make sure we're all understanding what that means when we say a classroom is taking a break or a classroom is relocated, that is what it means. So this is the data that we have collected. Uh, we have, now I'll wait. Let me pass this up so I can I'll explain it after. So I have alphabetized this by town, and the, the first number is going to be 22 23 school year. So Huzzy School. There were eight classroom breaks for the whole year, and that was by three, for three students. For Knowlton School, there were five classroom breaks for four students. So this year, thus far, at Huzzy School, there's been one. Knowlton School has been none. Lebanon for 22-23. Hanson School had 12 breaks for four students. Lebanon Elementary had five breaks for four students. And then this year, thus far, Hanson School has had six breaks for two students, and Lebanon Elementary has had none. 
North Berwick Elementary School last year had five breaks for three students, and for the 23-24 school year, one break for one student thus far. So that is that is what we have. We're not um, having breaks at the middle school, the high school, or NHA. Um, so that's why we just reported the elementary level score you came by. I just want to add to this. This is a great report. Thank you. Um, something I think that's true with this too is it's not like repetitive situations. Oftentimes, after it happens, there's either a teacher switch or maybe a student, like a classmate switch kind of thing. Um, if there are triggers known to prevent, it's not like, oh, okay, well, they did it, they did it again. There are steps being taken to try and adjust the environment yes. to do so. So just going back to, we're going to talk about the Berwick Parade, yeah. but then we also got an invite to the North Berwick Parade. <laughs> <laughs> so the North Berwick Parade is <laughs> Saturday Saturday after right after Thanksgiving at 4 o'clock. Yeah. So I, I'm just putting that out there because we put, you got the direct invite to, to Berwick, but you didn't get the direct, direct invite from North Berwick. So if you're interested in North Berwick, if you could just, or able to do that, if you could just email me so I could email them. And I, do you know what it entails? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you have to more <laughs> 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 I don't think it's far. Okay. Um, we already did see if PTO wanted to do like a okay. or something. Okay. Um, it seemed like there wasn't very much participation, so I think she was trying to push for something. It's just a time. It's exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Sorry, I have to go from Saturday after Thanksgiving. Oh, the both the same. No, 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 but I can send that. I can send that email out to you tomorrow, mm -hmm. so you can look at it. And then, if you want to just respond, that would be helpful, so I can respond back. And the parade is at four. Right, right, right. Shorter parade than Berwick. That's a good one. Four tree lighting. The tree lighting at five thirty. Okay. Okay. Space eating raffles, giveaways, pictures of Santa, Mrs. Claus. Okay. Oh, that's my that's my yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you get to it. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had questions um, about the the um, I, I guess it was a bullying situation in North um, at the high school. You sent out a memo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just your slide. Yes. Okay, um, so w one of my questions has to do with, you contacted North Berwick and the Berwick police. Does that mean that it did not include a Lebanon student? Or was Lebanon left out? Because Lebanon was not left out. From, so you, you also contacted the York we, County Sheriff? We, counted, we contacted the, the, the towns where the, the students were impacted. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Yeah. so no, we no, would no. have so contacted. I, I, I don't yeah. think, I don't yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. I think that like, right. yeah. no, 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 but, but it, it wasn't necessary no. to be no. okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, that was my question. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then another thing has come up where um, multiple active TikTok and smart chat um, accounts are bullying, harassing, and um, embarrassing. Noble Middle School students. Anything about that? You know anything we about that? know of a TikTok account that I believe was at Noble Seven or Eight, I want to say. And what that means is it's been shut down seven or eight times. So every time it every time it gets shut down, it gets restarted and they add a number to it. So, like, it started at one, now it's at eight because it's been shut down seven times. It's on the eighth time. So that is not that's a not a, you know, a staff run TikTok. That's that's not a school piece. But we are aware of it. We are addressing when we can 
um, it's it's not you know it's not something that will you know. So it's like yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So it did sound like it was um, targeting Noble Middle School students, and it was puppy up daily. So. So, so what we uh, I just want to make sure that yes. you're aware yes, of yes, 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 yes. There was you. anything that went out district wide uh, about this. I yeah. it sounds like you were talking about the 29th or so. Yeah. What, so, mm -hmm. that I don't think is necessarily what has triggered this for us, but we've had some conversations with um, the PD, with and I've invited folks, the Lebanon and Select folk, the Northburg and the Berwick town managers. Um, to attend a meeting with us on November 29th at 8 o'clock in the morning to talk about um, sort of rallying our groups together to, to, to set up a parental awareness um, regarding the use of TikTok and the use of all the social media stuff and how we can, like, it's not something that the schools can do by themselves. How else can we get parents involved in understanding what their kids are doing? So. We've had a great response from the local um, PD, et cetera, and they're, um, they're just going to meet on the 29th and talk about, like, how can we set up a community forum about this whole issue? Because it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question? Well, is, is this fully going to TikTok going on during school? Is this after school? What? I mean, I, the I I've it, heard of it. It's, so. it, it's in general. Yeah, I don't It's know. in general. It's hitting, you know, it's hitting kids' phones yeah. and, right, and that kind of stuff because they're they're all late. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, okay, so, and is that going to involve police too? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, they're all, actually, they're always happening, including the, um, I invited the um, sheriff from your Is that okay? Would you be invited to attend that? You may. We actually was. We were just doing a brainstorming session, but you're welcome to attend outside of that as well. We're just. I was trying to get a group together that could start thinking about how to how to impact the community in a good way. Any other Um, I don't have a overall PTO update um, from each town, but the PTOs in general are doing a serial drive through Monday. You can drop off at. Knowlton, Hussey, or North Berwick, and I believe there's a church in Lebanon that you can drop to. Uh, but basically, it's for the backpack program. We did it last year, and um, the backpack program supports kids who have unstable food situations at home, and so this is so they can go home with a full box of cereal on longer breaks. Um, and the hope is to collect enough for all four of the longer breaks. Um, but if you have a cereal boxes, you want to drop off by Monday, please, please do. Any kind. Any kind. Okay. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's fun. It's well, yeah, exactly. Fun. <laughs> it's the most magic fun. So, <laughs> to pick the more fun cereal. Because like, it's exciting, and they see it. And we did the domino effect of kindness last year through three or four of the schools. Um, we'll rely on them up, and the, like, the kids can come watch it. We did them here through the horseshoe, um, some of the gyms and stuff. So, I'm not 100% sure that's happening this year, but we'll still promote the videos. It's going to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other, other? Thank you for sharing that. No, and thank you guys for the building tour. That's yes. 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 going to be on time. Come on. No, and then <laughs> before we do the second executive session, I was going to say thank you. So thank you for that. Any other, other? <laughs> oh, I do have actually one more other. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it in budget season, but. We applied with the York County Sheriff's Department for a potential SRO grant for Lebanon, mm -hmm. and it has been approved. Um, but now the question is, um, it's not free, and the district will need to pay in for that. So it's going to be part of our budget discussion, but it's just important for you to know that, um, and the and um, Sheriff King is going to come to the a board meeting to talk with you about it in the future. Um, for him, he just feels like it would be such a huge support because the response time will be so much quicker if we were able. How much is the grant for? Do we have to match it? Um, yeah, we have to match it. It, it would cost us about 64000 a year. Mm -hmm. So it's not a cheap thing, um, but it is something that um, Lebanon, I love people. Mm -hmm. so we can do it. 
But anyways, I wanted to give you that update. We just got word on that uh, last week. And the sheriff's department has been great. In the, actually, New York County, um, I mean, the namesake police have been great, too. They, they do their best, but it's hard to find people to manage a pretty big department. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you didn't mention calling the parents at all, you just mentioned calling extra grown-ups to help with the child and remove them or walk them around the school or whatever. Right. Because I know, yeah. me being a parent, when my son stepped out of line, I got called and immediately left for it. So my, we were responding to a specific question that was asked by a board member, mm -hmm. and we answered fully the question that was asked by the board member. It wasn't about parents. It was about how many um, breaks were happening during the school day for the years in the schools. So, okay. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. Any other questions? So at this point, we need a motion to go into executive session. Um, second, second. All in favor? Okay. All right. So we need to say.